Friday, September 1st, is the first day of National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. We're celebrating 10 years of our foundation, Tell Every Amazing Lady About Ovarian Cancer, also known as TEAL. TEAL is both the color for ovarian cancer and the name of our foundation. There is no accurate screening test for ovarian cancer, so it's, so it's vital that we educate the, all the amazing ladies and men in New York City about these signs and symptoms of this devastating disease. It's usually caught at a late stage, but there are signs and symptoms. They could be things like bloating, pelvic pain, back pain. We can give you a lot of information. We can give you more information about those symptoms, but we really suggest that you see a doctor if they prolong for more than two weeks. We all know an amazing lady, right? But isn't it amazing that there's no screening test for this disease? We need everyone's help in order to change that. Tell Every Amazing Lady promotes awareness of our programs and we're especially noticeable every September all over New York City. So this year, we started on August 20th with about 25 of our volunteers turning all of Park Slope Teal in partnership with Turn the Towns Teal and with the support of the North Flatbush bid and the Park Slope Fifth Avenue bid. Teal ribbons will be hung all this month and through September along Fifth Avenue and Flatbush. And a lot of people here helped us hang those ribbons, so let's hear it for them. <laughs> Some of the businesses along Flatbush Avenue and Fifth Avenue are gonna be supporting us with special programs and, and deals and uh, things that will support our cause, so please support those merchants. Also coming up this September, the Myrtle Avenue bid will su be supporting the ribbon initiative in partnership with Turn the Town's Teal as well. So you'll see these teal ribbons all along Brooklyn. And this Saturday is gonna be the last game of the season with the Cyclones in Coney Island. And, Cyclones! and Tell Every Amazing Lady is gonna be a part of that pregame show and promoting awareness throughout the game. The Cyclones mascot, Pee Wee, is here today and he's helping us cheer on. Yeah! Yay, Pee -wee! We need a fan just for him. <laughs> Then the same night on September 1st, we're gonna be headed right over to the Luna Park parachute jump where that's gonna be turned teal. And this is all the first day of Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Earlier this year, we also turned the New York Stock Exchange teal. Plus we're having walks and runs, our teal walk and runs all over five cities in the United States this September, as well as many other awareness events all across New York City. Even our teal youth ambassador, Kiera, is gonna have her work displayed for ovarian cancer awareness in the Harlem Fashion Week this September. And we're especially excited to say that we're kicking things off this Saturday as well, where Brooklyn Borough Hall is gonna be lit, lit teal for an entire first week of September. Woo! We're gonna kick off National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month with teal rays of light all over this city. All of this is one week before our 10th annual Brooklyn Teal Walk, where we started it all about 10 years ago. The late Louisa M. McGregor, my sister and I, started this walk all those years ago, and we quick quickly realized that this city needed more than just a walk, but an entire foundation to tell every amazing lady about ovarian cancer. We provide support for all Brooklynites who need our help and to stop this devastating disease that usually is caught at a late stage. We're here for support for family who's been affected, and we welcome everyone into our Teal community. So now I'd like to um, take a minute, and it, we couldn't do anything that we do without our volunteers. We have about 200 volunteers a year. Woo. A lot of you are here today. Woo. So let's give yourselves Woo. a round of applause. Yeah. All of our staff and the hard work and dedication that they do, Let's give them applause. Woo! Our interns and the volunteers that work in our office, they commit themselves to all the work that we do all year long. Woo! <laughs> and for survivors, survivors here today, and patients, all those people that we support, we really need to give them our positive energy and help them heal with all that healing energy. Send it to them. <laughs> and the families affected by this disease. There's so many of us that it's been affected and we really have become a teal community together. So I'm gonna kick this off by saying now we have a lot of team captains here today um, with one of them being Councilman Espinal, who he's had a team called Team Espinal Ana Lucia and he's been a great supporter of ours 
for all these years since we started, and he knows just how devastating a disease can be. It affects his family too, just like mine, and we thank him for always sharing his story and helping us elevate the awareness of this disease. So let's thank hear you. it for him. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pam, and thank you to Tia for all of the great work you do on the behalf of all women and families across this borough, this city, and this country. I think it's no secret, and the borough president will attest to it, that when Brooklyn leads, the city follows, and the rest of the nation follows as well. So thank you for all the work you do. You know, Pam mentioned, um, I, I, I did lose my mom to ovarian cancer about five years ago, six years ago, time flies. And I have to say, to this day, it's, it's, a, it's a disease that has affected us, and to this day, we're still dealing with it. Um, and that did not have to be the case. You know, if my mom would have gotten the education, if the doctor she was visiting would have gotten the education of what the signs and symptoms uh, that they should be looking for, uh, I do, truly do believe that she would probably be standing here with us today. Um, and, you know, she was someone that went to the doctor on, on a consistent basis for many other reasons. She went to the doctor when she was feeling a little bit of back pain. The doctor sent her home with a little bit of Advil, and they never really got down to the issue and brushed it off as any other common symptom but that's because they were not sure what to look for. So, you know, if it wasn't for organizations, organizations like Teal, organizations like the Lion Club, the 200 volunteers that are going out every single day, making sure that every single woman knows what to look for, um, it, 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 it truly would be devastating to see the negative impact if we did not have that information going out there. So that's why it's important for me as a council member, as a city elected official, as, as a, uh, a, a victim of this, of this disease, to make sure that we put as much resources as we can to continue spreading the word, which is why I'm proud that every year uh, that Teal uh, applies for city funding, I make sure they receive that city funding. And we have been very successful in making that happen. I look forward to marching this year. I look forward to going to every single lighting this year. And keep doing the great work you do, because you only continue to get stronger. So thank you, Pam. Thank you, Teal. Thank, thank you to all the volunteers. Thank you. So now we have, thank you, Rafael Espinal. We have another team captain here, Dr. Uh, Wendy Wilcox from Kings County. She's going to be a team captain for the first time this year. And she's... <laughs> Thank you for supporting this uh, amazing uh, first time initiative at our, our Brooklyn Teal Walk. And we're going to have Kings County representing. There's a lot of other hospitals who are going to have teams too. So I'm excited to see the, the friendly rivalry we're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. It is really just um, such an honor for me to be part of such an amazing event, such an important event. and. Um, you know, to be representing New York City Health and Hospitals, Kings County, I appreciate being invited back this year. Last year, I didn't wear teal, so I made a really important investment this year because this is a fight we all have to join and we all have to be a part of. I'm not here by myself. I have Dr. Michelle Folan, who's also part of Kings County. She's, our, she's a GYN oncologist and our director of cancer services. And um, we also have our public relations, Keisha Giles, Giles here. So anyway, I brought, brought a, a mini team and we'll have a larger team for the walk. So I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about the medicine behind ovarian cancer. We know that each year about 15,000 women die from ovarian cancer in the United States. It is the fifth leading cause of cancer deaths. And unfortunately, in most cases, you know, ovarian cancer isn't diagnosed until it's too late, until it's progressed beyond the ovaries and spread to other parts of the body. Um, we really don't have a great screening test, um, but the symptoms, I'll just repeat some of them again, abdominal bloating and nausea, and of course, they're outlined on this wonderful sign behind me. People can have changes in appetite, pressure in the pelvis or lower back, changes in your bowels or bowel movements, increased abdominal size or girth, feeling tired, even changes in menstruation. And the point is that as women, we need to pay attention to our normal um, habits and the way our body works. And any change, we should really bring that to an attention of a physician. Um, women have to be more aware of the risk factors of ovarian cancer and events like this and all the other ones outlined that are gonna happen during the month of September really help to promote public awareness of these symptoms so that hopefully lives will be saved. Um, a key risk factor for ovarian cancer is age. 
So most women um, are diagnosed after menopause and are older than the age of 55. And at Kings County, we're absolutely ramping up our programs to screen women for this very devastating disease. What are other risk factors? Well, women who have a family history, such as a mother, sister, grandmother, or aunt, should be aware of their own risk. And perhaps, if they choose to, with their families, get genetic testing. Some of the breast cancer genes, such as BRCA1 and BRCA2, also lead to an increased risk of ovarian cancer. And women who have been previously diagnosed with other cancers, such as breast, colorectal, or endometrial cancer, are also at higher risk for developing ovarian cancer. What decreases your risk? Having a child before the age of 30, women who've used oral contraceptives for at least three months, and some women who've undergone certain types of gynecologic surgery, such as tubal ligation or hysterectomy. What are the important messages? Just to wrap things up, women have to be aware. Oh, September is Awareness Month, Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month, and we've got to keep this aware, awareness going. We should all go home and tell two friends and then make sure that they tell two, et cetera, et cetera. And they should know, women should know their family history and the next step in undergoing, uh, is possibly undergoing genetic testing. And we can't forget trying to keep a healthy lifestyle, including regular gynecologic care. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wilcox. Now we have another team captain. Team SHARE is one of our largest teams, and we do a lot of work with SHARE cancer support. So today we have Andrea Hertzberg here, and she's so committed to everything that she does. She's one of the most passionate people I've met, and we're so happy to have her here today. Yay. Yay. That's so kind. I want to thank Borough President Adams, and thank you, Pam, for this opportunity to join Councilman Espinal, Dr. Wilcox, uh, here today. Uh, as you can tell from my accent, I'm a Brooklyn gal. <laughs> I am also a 22-year survivor of late-stage ovarian cancer. Wow. So I am both delighted and quite lucky to be here this morning rallying support for the Tell Every Amazing Lady's annual walk in Prospect Park. Team share with ovarian cancer survivor and Park Slope resident Debbie Polinski at its helm, is proud to have participated in this walk every year since its inception. Pam asked me to talk about why we walk for Teal. We walk for Teal because in honoring her sister Louise's memory, Pam and her organization have given ovarian cancer survivors visibility. On Saturday, September 8th, the ovarian cancer survivors of Team Share will again be immersed in a sea of teal. <laughs> what a wonderful way to realize that even though you were diagnosed with the deadliest of all gynecologic cancers, you are still here. And you are not alone. Plus, your survival is being celebrated in grand style in a magnificent Brooklyn park. We walk for Teal because the money we raise, we help raise, funds research. Research that could result in the effective early screen that's eluded us all these years. Research that can lead to better treatments. Research that could lead to a cure for ovarian cancer or ways to prevent it. Team Share walks for Teal because we literally want to tell every amazing lady that low risk does not mean no risk. Yeah, that's that ovarian cancer is an equal opportunity destroyer affecting women of every age, every ethnicity that because there is no early effective screening test, the majority of, of ovarian cancers, as you've heard, are caught in later stages when it is more challenging to treat. We want to tell every amazing lady that there are symptoms, used to be known as the silent killer, the disease that whispers, as you've heard from uh, Dr. Wilcox, that's not true. Bloating, chief among them, bloating, pelvic or abdominal pain, difficulty eating or feeling full quickly, urinary symptoms, 
having to go with great urgency or great frequency. We want to tell every amazing lady that if these or other symptoms are new and not normal for you and last for two weeks or more, you should see a doctor and tell her or him that you want to rule out ovarian cancer. Be aware of your family history, as you've heard, and be an engaged and empowered guardian of your own health. Team Share walks for Teal because like Pam and her family, we want to honor the memories of many, many courageous women we loved who died from this disease. And finally, Team Share walks for Teal because Teal supports Share. Together, these organizations, as you've heard, host a support group at Teal's offices in Brooklyn. Research is critical but supporting patients and their families is also important. As I said before, I'm a lucky gal from Brooklyn. I was diagnosed when my daughter was four and a half. She's now 26, a taxpayer, living in Prospect Heights. And I got to raise her. This month, I celebrated my 30th wedding anniversary with a wonderful husband. And seven years ago, I retired from the NYPD as a sergeant supervisor of a detective squad, thrilled to finish out a richly satisfying 26-year career. Now I am privileged to recruit and train ovarian cancer survivors who answer calls seven days a week for SHARE's ovarian helpline. SHARE's ovarian community is proud each year to walk for Teal. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. That's why we invited you here today. You're so good at, at the passion just comes right out of her and you got to see her on walk day. She's on fire, so thank you. So we have Borough President Eric Adams has joined us and I want to take a minute and tell him um, that this year is really special to us, that it's our 10 year anniversary, but being born and raised in Brooklyn myself as well, it's so, uh, I just always feel really proud that Brooklyn is behind us, it's behind this foundation, it supports us in whatever we do, and we're just so happy to be able to, to be here today, and we're kicking off the, the announcement that um, Teal's uh, Borough, Pres Borough Hall is gonna be lit Teal uh, for the first whole entire week of the first National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. So thank you, uh, uh, Borough President, and uh, we wanna have you say a few words, thank you. <laughs> Good seeing you. Thanks so much. We want to thank Pamela, Wendy, Adrian, and my council person that's here, Espinal, Councilman Espinal. We are part of the Men Who Gets It Club, and we clearly understand. I think the only term that really personifies this moment, uh, when we first met Pamela and her energy around this entire ovarian cancer awareness and push, is that if you have the fortune to live long enough, you're going to have the misfortune to experience pain. The question that lingers over all of us is how do we turn pain into purpose instead of falling back into a state of somber and saying, woe is me, say, why not me? Why can't I use the loss of a loved one or some significant moment that impact my life to move forward and save the lives of others. And that's what this amazing group of women have done. Uh, we are so excited, uh, both the councilman and I, when we go to Prospect Park and see the different families and the different teams. Uh, it is unimaginable to walk across the stage and receive the rose, the flower, and talk about your survival rate, how many years. Hearing the sergeant, the detective sergeant, uh, talk about having a diagnosis at one age and then raising her daughter to be in her 20s. It's an amazing experience and you are empowering women all over this city. That walk is just more than an insignificant moment taking place on the stage of fighting cancer. It is a time when people can come together and look across the park and look across the area where we assemble and say, I am not alone. I feel the empowerment, I feel the energy, I feel the strength. Uh, there is no greater recipe, there is no greater prescription, there is no greater drug 
uh, than the drug of human interaction, to let each other know that I am here with you. And every year that we come here uh, to light this building, Teal, it sends a signal. The oldest governmental building in this in this borough, and if it was an independent city, it would be the third largest city in America. It is sending a light that would cascade throughout the entire borough. This is such an important initiative. We're happy to be a part of it. We're going to get two large teal bowls, and we're going to tie them on both these lampposts here to let people on the ground level understand that we not only have to fight it in the sky, but we have to fight it on the ground every day. What you do, Pamela, and your team, and all of you, and the Lions are always here, what you do is just really send the signal of hope to the countless number of people who felt as though it was something to abandon. It's unimaginable to walk inside a doctor's office and to be told that you have some form of cancer. Right away, you identify that with death. You identify it with no possibilities, no chances, no way to move forward. We're going to encourage uh, all of our doctors that treat ovarian cancer, we're going to encourage them to let the patients know, partner with that diagnosis, they need to let them know about TIL to let them know the support group that is available, to let them know you will not have to stand and fight alone. What you give women every day that go through this impactful diagnosis, you give them that hope and people need to know about it. We cannot thank you enough. Brooklyn, thank you. The entire city thanks you. Continue to do what you do. 10 years later, you have moved this conversation forward. Your sister is looking down on us and she said thank you for giving other people the same hope and opportunity that so many people miss. We cannot thank you enough. I appreciate you. This is one of our favorite events we like to do. We will always be standing here with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Borough President. Thank you, everybody who, who is here today. Thank you, everyone, for speaking today. And I know this year we're going to have our best walk yet, our best September yet. It's just around the corner. If you know people who haven't registered for our Brooklyn Teal Walk run, there's only a few days left. Next week, registration online closes. So visit tealwalk.org slash Brooklyn. We have pamphlets here today. We have information. We want to see our biggest teams yet, our biggest crowds yet. This is the September that matters. We're lighting up all of Brooklyn, all these buildings and monuments, and the teal ribbons are going to be everywhere you look. So we need your help in spreading that message and telling every amazing lady. So thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Thank you.